Um, yeah, so I'm going to pass the mic to Griff to get us started and just share a little bit about Giveth and what we're doing here in the Give Economy. Ah, uh, thanks. Yeah, so so Giveth is uh, has been a, around since 2016. We've been trying to bring a bridge the nonprofit space to the Web3 world. And it's a difficult task, uh, but we're going to do it. Uh, and, and we finally uh, just recently in December launched the Give Economy that I think can really make it happen. So uh, Giveth is uh, first and foremost a donation platform, of course. So as you all know, because uh, all of you have projects on Giveth, you can come on to Giveth and it's super easy to start a, uh, to start a project. You can just create a project and you can even log in with Google and get an Ethereum address and we try to make that as simple as possible. But uh, the real long-term goal is to be, think beyond donations and uh, to start getting into the Web3 space where uh, people can actually be adequately rewarded for the value they're creating. Currently in the, in the, in the uh, what I like to call the abundance economic space, the space where governments and nonprofits really thrive, where they're creating value for, uh, for society and satisfying collective wants and needs. Oh, hey, Grace. Uh, oh, and she's gone. Um, uh, Grace is a, a founder back in 2016, so uh, it was good to see her for a second. But uh, in, in this space where not governments and nonprofits are providing value, they actually don't really receive value in return because it's hard to have a business model. Right? There, there's no customer. You're not excluding people from the value you're creating. And so we need a different model. We need economic models. And, and uh, we really believe that Giveth has, uh, has an opportunity here to change the way the space works and actually give people, as opposed to business models, give people economic models that can actually capture, that, that can, where they can be rewarded for the value they're creating. Uh, so it's very exciting, and uh, and we're using the give economy to really push this forward. So, but I don't. Uh, I'll go into the give economy a little bit later. I think that's enough of an intro into Giveth, and maybe I can let uh, Forrest actually dive into introing the projects that are really the focus here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Griff. Um, so first up, I would love to introduce Gabriel, who's representing the Afro-Ecuadorian Arts and Heritage Museum. Um, this is a really amazing project that has been uh, going in Ecuador for more than two decades. Um, they're a grassroots NGO that are supporting the youth through um, arts and music and culture, really supporting um, yeah, really supporting uh, creating more pride in black culture and in um, like really understanding the, the history of um, yeah, this island off the coast of Ecuador. Um, they, they have also an award-winning dance academy, which is so cool. They are performing marimba music and dance. And um, yeah, this is a way of getting the youth off of the streets and uh, channeling them away from, um, yeah, like an aggressive kind of like violence and, and uh, drugs that are sometimes going on in the city and instead uh, funneling their energy into music and arts and dance and celebrating history. So I would like to introduce Gabriel to give us a little bit more about what we are doing here and the new Heritage Museum that they're looking to build. So I will pass it to you, Gabriel. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Perfect. Oh, well, thanks very much, everyone, for, first of all, for this opportunity to introduce our project. I think this is a very important space uh, for projects like, like ours uh, to, you know, to just to reach people's ears, right? You know, just to, to, to reach people's minds so we can all uh, benefit from it. So, well, we are part of a foundation here in Ecuador in Guayaquil called uh, Clotilde, Guerrero, Clotilde Guerrero Foundation. Uh, as you well described at Forest, uh, we've been working here for more than 20 years, uh, working especially with people in Isla Trinitaria, which is a well, Trinitary island, which is an island uh, near the coast of Guayaquil, uh, where most uh, of the people who live there, there are Afro-Ecuadorians. And, and this is interesting because uh, 
Guayaquil has, is a city with the largest African Ecuadorian population, yet you can't really see that in the culture around. You can really see that in the museums. So this is a space uh, that we're trying to create. This museum that we're trying to, to, to create is basically a way to say, you know, there is a big population. There is a, a, a very rich culture here, living here. Uh, we can still see it in the museums, in the big museums of the city. And apart from this, we'll, we'll, as, as, you, as you also said it, um, we have a marimba dance and music uh, band where all the people from the community, like everyone basically, like from ch children to adults, go and learn from African Ecuadorian culture. If it is their culture, if they are African Ecuadorian, they learn about their heritage, their history. But if they are not African Ecuadorian, they can still learn because this culture is for everyone. And this is basically what we want to do. We want to uh, just, you know, expand it, expand the culture as, as, as much as we can uh, through arts and culture. And this is very important in, in the environment where we work because we're also in a, one of the poorest areas in the city. So, and, and there is a lot of violence in the streets as well. So we can kind of counteract that with culture and, and we basically turn people from the streets to, to artists. So yeah, basically, I think that's that. That's a very short description. Uh, I'm very interested in, in in what people have to say about this. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, definitely, I want to open it up to questions, but uh, one question that I have just to get us kicked off is, um, when people donate to your project and you're receiving funds, where is the first place that, that you guys are utilizing that on the ground? Yes. In the in the in the mini, in, in the moment right now we're trying to build the the the, the museum area because we have a, a a community center. So basically, that's where we, where everything happens. We 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 feed people there. We uh, we we run the dance academy. Uh, so basically, what right now we want we need more space. We need more space to to you know to to have more people in the academy. Uh, to and also to 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 start the museum. So the first thing that we want to do with these funds uh, is building a second uh, floor where we can run the museum. Wonderful. Are there any other questions from our audience for Gabriel of the Afro Ecuadorian Arts and Heritage Museum? I do have one question for you. Gabriel, I love your project. I think um, preserving and sharing our culture and bringing it back in to the lives of our youth uh, is an amazing initiative and I applaud you for it. I'm curious, have you been working with crypto before? Or do you have a way for when you're receiving these funds to be able to pay the folks who are doing the work? We have a couple of people who are part of the of the foundation who have their own wallets and basically yeah we're trying to uh receive the funds and then just uh, turn them into into dollars to so we can we can we can buy you know uh, all the all the construction materials and and everything we need awesome so you've got people there who have it already set up and can help you with that yes yes for sure and so just a question um, off of that one sort of is what, what brought you to Giveth? What turned you on to Giveth? How did you get there? Well, uh, curiosity and, you know, just trying to, trying to match two of my passions, which is uh, philanthropy and, and crypto, right? So when I found Giveth, I was like, this is perfect. Uh, this is also a perfect space for exposure of, of the projects that we do, you know, we usually have the traditional exposure in like national spaces, you know, just in Ecuador, it's very difficult for us to reach out uh, mm -hmm. to, to other spaces, to other economies as well. So that's basically mere curiosity and, and just passion <laughs> for, for, what I, for what I do. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I understand, I hear you, thank you. <laughs> thank you. 
Are there any other questions? I think we have time for probably one or two more questions. I think uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, just wondering uh, or curious that uh, how much donation you've received so far for your project, uh, if you want to share. And uh, how do you find the experience? What Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? Sorry, so, I didn't hear you well. Uh, how much donation you've received? Uh, so far, do you want to share? And what, like, how do you find the experience uh, with uh, with Giveth? With people donating to you? Oh, I find it wor I find it wonderful. Uh, I think we have like uh, I don't remember the exact exact amount on in Ethereum, but it's around two thousand five hundred dollars, which is great. <laughs> I think it's very it, like it, it, I, I wasn't expecting anything. I was just like curious about the platform and just just trying to you know, to uh to experiment with it and and yeah so far it's been it's been great i see a lot of people a lot of anonymous people some people who also you know want to know who they are i i, th I think it's great i think it's a it's a really beautiful vibe when you when you receive these donations from and you know people people believing in your in your in your world right people believing in, in, in what you're doing people uh also like you know who have the same passion sometimes and then you who are also like connecting with you and and and, and making sure your project uh, works. So I think it's, it's it's wonderful. It's a wonderful experience for us. That's so beautiful. And I noticed I had some excitement when you said, "Oh yeah, I think we've received twenty five hundred dollars, which is great." And then Griff was sharing the screen, and it actually looks like you got a little bit over three thousand dollars so far. So, woo! <laughs> oh, well, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so Amazing. beautiful. <laughs> is there anything else that you would like to share, Gabriel? about your project before we shift on over to our next? Mm, yeah, well, just, uh, you know, just mentioning again the importance of culture in in the youth, especially, right? Uh, sometimes people don't uh, really understand, you know, that something, uh, something intangible, like culture, like music, can have such a wonderful impact in a society and, and, and from our from our experience, from our perspective, working with children, working with the youth and culture, it's kind of some for, for some people who really need it. It's it, it could be therapeutic, like it could be like something like that like really really impacts possibly in your life. Not only because of the music, but also because of the of the people you meet around, of all the activities you you do, and all everything that happens while you are doing culture, right? Uh, so I think it's 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 great to see people who who are interested in in, in, in cultural heritage, because for us is is something that can transform society. Yeah, that's just such powerful work, giving our youth something to be proud of and somewhere to channel their their energy and creativity and inspiration and creating a sense of pride. And also something I appreciated when I was reading about your project is also the the emotional space spaces and, and connections and sort of mentorship between um, people in the organization that, that also is another um, really impactful way to support our youth so thank you so much for the work that you're doing um, if you guys resonate uh, with this project please be sure to log into your give it the account and throw a little heart next to their project you can see that in the bottom right hand corner by share you can also easily donate um, and you can just look up under the projects page afro-ecuadorian arts and heritage museum and, and they will pop up thank you so much gabriel um, I would love to pass the mic back on over to um, Griff and Lauren if you guys have anything that you'd like to share more about Giveth before um, we introduce our next project. No, actually, well, I, I don't know. I thought um, I thought Ashley was going to show off the the wallet and how to donate in these things. 
Is that true, Ashley? Maybe I got this wrong. Cool. Well, uh, I mean, I can do that. I can definitely do it. I have my s screen shared. So um, if, I, if you're watching this and you want to support Afro Ecuadorian Arts and Heritage Museum, it's super easy. Uh, normally, you might go to the projects page and yeah, like ideally, the expectation that I have mostly is that, uh, you know, that Gabriel, Gabriel would be, you know, sh spreading this link, the link directly to his site on Twitter and Facebook and all those places so people can just go through the link and not have to search. But we have this great search tool. And so it's like, okay, I'll just do Afro. And then, ah, yay, Afro Ecuadorians right here. So you can donate directly on this page or you can go to learn more and see the page that I was showing you before uh, where you can see the uh, description. Also, we're going to be pushing updates a lot soon. Uh, so if you don't stay updated, if you don't keep updating your page, then actually you will lose your verified status. Uh, maybe Ashley can speak to that later, but we haven't implemented that yet, so you're okay. But we are gonna uh, you know, want regular updates on the projects. And then of course you can see the leaderboard and like who really this is a transaction history more than the leaderboard of who has been supporting the project. And of course, if you just want to get down to brass tacks, you can say, hey, let's donate. Uh, you know, I'll donate 100 give right now, which is about like 50 bucks, I think. Uh, you can donate anonymously if you'd like. And what's great is, of course, uh, donating on XDAI, the, it, the fee is so cheap, it's basically free. So you can donate here. You get a little pop up. I use MetaMask, so it just pops up like this. Obviously, if you're using Taurus or other wallets, you'll have a different experience there. And I'm not sure if the pop up even showed on my screen because I'm just sharing the window. But then, yay, you get, uh, you know, you get a little bit of, uh, of confetti and happy feelings, of course. And then you can, uh, oh, these are my donations. But then you can go back to the projects page and you can see your transaction here on on this list and of course you'll get give backs and all these cool things for donating and if if you know someone who wants to create a project that's where things are really fun because you can just create a project here and you can say uh you know what is the name of the project uh i don't know how about meet the makers we need more of these and then you can uh you can write a description. I don't really have a description. Let's see if it'll even let me go forward. Yay, you can pick the categories and uh, pick a location. So obviously for a lot of open source projects, it has global impact, so you can just put that right there. And add an image. And then of course, say what address that you want to use. Uh, let's yeah, and uh, right now it's uh, the address cannot be a contract address. So you would uh, you want to use a normal uh, key so that way it works on XDAI and Ethereum. But we're looking to support that in the next version that's coming out. And that's it. And uh, then you actually have uh, your own project on Giveth. I'm not going to actually click next. I don't. Well, I think it lets me review. And then I'm not going to actually click this last one to create the project, though. Save the back end people some work. Yeah, Danny? Uh, I was just, as you were just talking about putting the address in there, do you recommend that people create projects with their own personal address, or should they be having a specific address for a project? That is a perhaps? great point, Danny. It's a huge point. Uh, we really want, because of the way the Give Back program works, it's really important that you practice uh, some, some like financial independence for each project. Uh, it's best to create a fresh wallet address, a brand new address that's never been used for the project uh, to start receiving funds because we actually do, uh, we only reward uh, donations, first touch donations. So, don so when your project receives donations, if you try to use that address to then donate to another project, uh, that would actually like flag your address as doing potential fraud. Specifically, we have to be careful that people don't, you know, receive donations and then donate again to their own project or to one of their friends' projects and then get more givebacks and try to do this recirculating 
funds thing. So we have systems in place to actually check to make sure that people aren't um, frauding the system in that way. And uh, because of that, uh, actually some financial hygiene to like separate your funds from your nonprofit's funds is very much uh, appreciated. And in future versions of the application, it'll, it won't be, you won't even have the cho be ability to donate from these addresses. Uh, thanks, Danny. That was a great uh, thing to add. And uh, Ashley, did you have anything to add? Cool. Cool. Well, then with that, I'll pass it back to you, Forrest. Thank you. Um, that was super informative. Uh, thank you for the screen share and walking us through that griff. And I just want to give a reminder to everyone here that um, we do have a, an event chat channel for the Meet the Makers event. So in addition to be on, being on video here, if you're on the Giveth Discord, you can look and see there's a hashtag event dash chat channel. And if you have additional questions for projects that come up um, and we've already moved on to something else, you can always throw them in the chat and then our representatives, our makers, can go in and respond to your questions there. Um, okay, so next on the agenda, let me just double check. Um, so we have Najombe Innovation Academy. And uh, just to give a little intro there, um, I want to make sure I'm saying your name correctly. Is it Matodo? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Great. Um, yeah, so we have the Najombe Innovation Academy, um, and this is a really epic project that is um, working with the SENA model um, that has been proven throughout multiple different locations around the world. Um, and it's a way in which youth can sort of become entrepreneurs and self-reliant and resilient um, by creating um, pioneering uh, enterprises with the tools and resources that they have at their disposal. So some examples um, of uh, entrepreneurial businesses that have been created are like organic mosquito repellent soap and mm, doing construction builds out of um, plastic bottles and bricks. Um, so yeah, they have a really amazing model that has been tried and true and this is something that is being brought to Tanzania in Africa. Um, so I'm going to pass it over to Matodo and let him talk a little bit more about this specific project and what they're doing and give us a little bit behind the scenes. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I, I feel you, you, you explained a lot already. <laughs> But I will share my screen. I'm sorry for Ashley and Danny and Melody. I think they already know about what we are doing. So we are in Jump Innovation Academy. Here a bit of context. We are in Tanzania, in the east of Africa. In Jombe, we are in the south. And just some pictures. Um, we are doing this because um, we see that there, there are local youth. We use this metaphor of a caterpillar, like the image. Um, so these local youth do not have many income generating opportunities and probably neither the mindset to change that situation, but they, of course, they do have like potential. Um, and at the same time, there are challenges uh, around us which uh, involve every, all of us. And we also see that the ecosystem is not very collaborative, uh, especially in the business ecosystem. That's why we believe that we can unleash the potential of youth to solve uh, local challenges through social enterprises. Um, we do that, as Forrest was mentioning, through the five-stage empowerment process that has been already developed and uh, has proven to be successful in, in, at SINA in Uganda. It's a process where between 20 and 40 uh, scholars live together in a community. They self-organize, they use holacracy for that. And as time goes, they, they, they increase their, their le level of freedom on what they do as a community, in the community, and the level of uh, responsibility. 
and they develop both uh, at the personal level, especially at the beginning of that process, and later on at the at the professional level. So that at the end, and those caterpillars can become beautiful butterflies that uh, establish, create, and establish uh, social enterprises. Um, this is uh, our roadmap. Uh, right now, there are two people, two young people from Jombe, who have uh, traveled to Uganda. They will spend there the next uh, nine months, so they will experience the full SINA experience, and they will come back to Njombe, so that at the end of this year, or beginning of the next one, we can st start the first cohort in Tanzania. And in the meantime, in Tanzania, we will gather people around us and try to find potential scholars for the first cohort. We also need to find a place or build it where we will live and we are connecting with people like we are doing today. Um, these are just some pictures of our fellows, Johanna and Esther. They traveled last week uh, from Tanzania, from Jombe in the south, to all the way to Uganda to do this, this uh, very beautiful place, the, the Sina in Uganda. And I mean, I wanted to mention that this is thanks to Giveth main, mainly, not only, but mainly, like uh, the donation from Giveth uh, helped us a lot to make this possible. And our vision is to replicate what Sina in Uganda has already achieved. Uh, these are some numbers and some awards that they have uh, they have since like they started a number of years ago. And here you can see uh, all the social enterprises that have been born at Sina. And Sina's uh, vision is also to to create a network of uh, places like Nia, like in Jumbi Innovation Academy, that uh, that work for the same future. So it's Win -win. Um, of course, we want to fund this and we need to make it sustainable. And since the, since we started, we have been crowdfunding on Gitcoin, also on Giveth, plus the help of Panvala. Um, we are starting to work on some income generating activities, like offering uh, support to businesses. We are organizing events. Um, we would like to uh, onboard people into Web3 local people. And in the future, we are super excited about Gurbes and who knows something about community currency. So uh, I will paste uh, this uh, URL uh, link there in the chat so that you can uh, fill in if you want to help us or uh, want to know more about us. Uh, I will just paste it now. Um, so that's all. Asante Nisana, thanks a lot. Na Karibuni, welcome to Tanzania. Wow, incredible. Thank you so much for, for everything you're doing for the, the youth of Africa and Tanzania specifically, um, and really exciting to see that that two scholars were just able um, to go for the next nine months and really go hands on the ground and, and learn so that they can bring this to the next cohort. Um, I want to open it up now to the audience and see if there are any questions for Njombe Innovation Academy. So I guess my question is, you have you have two uh, projects, Njombe Beyond and Njombe Innovation Academy. Is there what's the what's the difference between the two, and and what are their purposes? Yeah, so the Njombe Beyond was started like two years ago, and it's a small scale plastic recycling project where we use open source technology to recycle plastic. And the goal there is to share the knowledge that we are gaining on plastic recycling so that local people, their artisans, can replicate and create their small businesses um, with those with that uh, open source technology. And uh, Jumbi Innovation Academy started this year, so it's a project that came later. And uh, it, they are not connected yet, but we hope at some point they, they could be connected. And are there any other questions from our audience? Um, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Suga. Uh, 
um, Medardo, wow, that was wonderful. Thank you for that that presentation. I don't know if I missed. I think I missed something because I was reading about the the other the the first project you were talking about, the plastic recycling. And so maybe I missed the part where you explain where what the scholars what specifically are they doing on the ground there? What kind of activity? Do you mean in, in Uganda already or yeah? Yes. So there are a number of uh, enterprises. I don't know uh, all of them. Like uh, Forrest was mentioning, the some of they have their enterprises. So I know one of them is producing this anti mosquito soap, so so that people just need to wash themselves instead of using mosquito repellent. There are some others producing um, buildings with plastic uh, bottles. Uh, recycling plastic waste into clothes, um, helping people with HIV. Like I know, the thing is the the main thing, and what I really like is that people create uh, enterprises that affect them, them them themselves like personally. So you can see the person who is an albino, for example, starts a social enterprise which helps uh, albino people. The person who has HIV is doing something to help people with HIV, and so on. So that's the the beauty, I think, and that's what really moves these uh, enterprises uh, forward, I would say. Sure, like the in the link I pasted, um, we are asking, that's uh, exactly what uh, what we we are looking for like not only financial uh, contributions but maybe ideas connections feedback uh, yeah or anything that uh, me mentoring actually like we would like when the cohorts start running in in tanzania we would like help from mentors who can uh, move these uh, social enterprises uh, forward and if anyone uh, here or you know anyone who is good at that then you are super welcome and even for us now, we are also trying to find the um, income generating activities and we would love to get uh, mentorship or any kind of help for, for that. Super beautiful. Oh, go ahead, Griff. You have a question? Yeah, I, I saw that you're part of the Panvala League uh, and you also have a traceable project on give it i mean you guys you guys are like rock stars in the web3 space do you want to talk about how panvala has helped you and also the like it, how you use give it trace yeah unluckily we have not used trace yet uh, because it's on mainnet and that's uh, unaffordable for us and we didn't get the donations there as far as i know panvala is uh, is great like um we we got some funding, for example, for an event uh, to to host a screening. We didn't do it yet, but we we will do it. And and it's it's been super nice. Like we connected with um, I, uh, yeah, Ashley and other people, and it's something we yeah we we are very excited about. And the the bad thing is like um, we the funds we used before. You were asking how did we use the funds for us. Um, we exchanged them to fiat because we had to make a payment for Sina in Uganda for the our scholars to stay there for nine months and we had to make that uh, exchange to fiat. We, we were talking with them, oh, are you interested in crypto? Would you like to learn? This is a nice opportunity, but unluckily they, they were not interested, so we had to make the exchange. And the funds we got from Panvala are on mainnet, so we didn't use them yet. We need to dev them to, to go up until fees are reasonable, and then we can make use of them. So luckily, what we had uh, from Gibbet was enough so far, and we could move forward. Wow, I have one more question. I'm so sorry for us. <laughs> but um, how did you exchange the XDI funds into local currency? We used uh, Monolith, it's a, a card, so yeah, from Xpollinate to directly to this Monolith, and then with Monolith you can make a payment, so they had a, a card payment uh, yeah, platform there themselves, so we just made the payment. It was not so difficult, 
Okay. That's amazing. Okay. Mon monolith uses, what, what do they use uh, when you used X pollinate? What chain did you go to? Uh, mainnet. Uh, mainnet Ethereum. Cool. Mm. But if you have any other suggestion, or like. <laughs> well, th this is why I'm asking. I don't have good suggestions. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> ideally. Great solution. I would love uh, other people to accept those donations, but not they are not ready yet. I hope they will. Do we have any other questions for Nijombe Innovation Academy? And Matodo, is there anything that you would like to share in closing? No, just again, I don't know if you all check the link, the link that I shared, but it would be great to get some responses there. And thanks for organizing this. Yeah, thank you so much. And so, yeah, that link is in the event chat channel. And remember, if you have any questions that come up later, you can always throw them in, in there um, and stay connected with our projects. Um, so now I just want to take um, a few minutes and uh, we would love to share a bit more deeply about our Givebacks program, which is something really amazing, um, really benefiting both the makers and the donors. Um, Griff, is this something that you want to go over or Lauren, do you prefer to? Lauren could speak up if she disagrees, but she she's not feeling so healthy today, so I'll probably be Aww. taking it. Out. Yeah, uh, okay, for sure. Uh, so yeah, so welcome to the Give Economy. The whole purpose of the Give Economy is this program that we call Give Backs. So Give Backs is a way for Give It to exit to the community and allow donors to govern the donation platform that we're building. So it's super cool. Uh, and it also models itself after the tax deductible donation scene. Now, I always lose people there because like, oh wait, are things tax deductible? No, forget about taxes, forget about governments. We're not worried about that. We're actually replacing the 501c3 service that the US federal government provides with our own token economy. And in this way, we can reward donors for donating. And everything, all of the give economy is, that currently exists is built around this give backs program. So when you donate to a nonprofit on Giveth to an, or, or for a good project on Giveth, what's really cool is the for a good project doesn't have to be a legal nonprofit. Of course, it's great if they are. That makes our verification job a lot easier. But they can actually just be a mutual aid group or uh, somebody who um, actually produces value for their community and documents that value and has a history of document of, of, uh, of value production that they have been documenting on social media or some other service, uh, some way that they can show that they do this work, right? And that if they receive donations, they will use the donations well. We don't care if you're a legal entity and we don't care what jurisdiction you decide to hang out in. Uh, on the donate donor side, it's the same thing. Normally to get rebate on donations, you have to donate to an organization that's in your jurisdiction where you're paying taxes. Here, Give It doesn't care about any of this red tape. You can donate to any verified project on Give It and you receive givebacks. So givebacks are literally give tokens. We, we, uh, when you, if you donate $100 right now uh, in, in whatever currency you choose to donate in, then currently you will get about eight dollars worth of give tokens sent to you at the end of every two week round and on top of that liquid give tokens that you get to uh the, which are currently about eight percent but it, it it grows over time uh, how much is liquid you also get a stream now in this give stream the way that it works right now is that it's about 67 percent of your donation goes into the give stream of give tokens at that time, right? So, so uh, while our donation numbers are small, which they are still with Giveth, relatively small, uh, we're actually giving back 75% of the donation. But, you know, we try not to say this 75% thing because it's very confusing. It's like you get some of it right now, 
the rest of it actually goes into a stream for the next five years. So who knows, it could be 75%, it could be 10% if the give token price goes down. But the most revolutionary thing that I, I believe we've done with givebacks is if the give price goes up, you could actually, over the next five year period, make more money than your own donation. It's the first time ever that donations have an upside. So it's not now, really don't quote me on this 75% because it's not 75%. You get a percentage up front that is liquid uh, and then you get a stream of give tokens over the next five years. And who knows how much that will be? It depends on the give token price. But if you believe in the future that we're trying to create and you think that, we're, uh, that we can make this system a success, donating has upside and, uh, and that's super cool. And we do that to the give backs program. So uh, there, we're in, currently we're uh, in the middle of round five, uh, the give backs round five. We can give away up to 1 million give. And this is where that 75% number really comes in. If we have a lot of donations in a round, uh, so much that it's worth, uh, that 75% of the donations are worth, um, so we don't, we're, it would require more than a million give, then the percentage goes down. Right now, we're nowhere near that. We are, uh, we're using somewhere around um, 100,000 gifts. So we're not even, we're barely at 10% of the maximum capacity before we start decreasing the total amount that everyone gets back. So, uh, so yeah, I feel like you can donate freely on the platform and know that you're going to actually get something back in return, which is super cool. And we do these donation rounds. So when you donate, uh, you don't get the give tokens right away. We uh, we capture the price of of your donation. So if you donated give tokens or you donated ether, we look at the price at that moment and turn it into a US dollar amount. And then at the end of the round, we look at what the price and and we do a little bit of fraud detection. So we make sure people aren't recirculating donation or trying to game the system in any way. And then a few days after we analyze the the donations that round then we uh, freeze the price of give tokens and we have uh, and we make the distribution. The distribution itself takes a day or two uh, based off votes in our DAO and stuff like that. Uh, and so usually at the end of a round, some time between like four days to even two weeks, if we're having a lot of fraud detection or, or challenges uh, calculating the results, then uh, you'll get your give tokens uh, back. And so that's kind of how givebacks works from a very technical standpoint. Sorry, that's usually where I hang out. Uh, so that's, of course, the perspective I like to give. The, the, the overview is that every two rounds is a donation round. Donate during that two rounds. We capture all those donations and we reward those who give. And with those give tokens, you can participate in the give economy, which I'm sure I'll get to shill in the next round. Take it for us. Whew, I'm excited. I'm like, okay, let's take a break and I'm going to go in and I want to donate to a bunch of projects. Givebacks is super cool and revolutionary. So thank you for, for sharing and, and giving us a run through on that. Um, next up, we have the College Success DAO as our next maker project that we would like to share about. Um, College Success DAO is super cool. Um, they've created a student-led improvement community um, that is really solving the problem of um, increasing the population of underrepresented students who actually go through and graduate college and are able to achieve um, social economic freedom. Um, so they're doing that through Web3 economy, which is really um, some interesting application of this technology. Um, who we have representing today is Ben Sanoff. He is the Director of Data Analytics at the High Tech High Graduate School of Education. And he is supporting his teams in using data for learning. Um, ben, I'm going to pass the mic to you and let you take it away. I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear you. Uh, 
I'm also presenting here with Ben. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, I hear you great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, thanks, everyone. Excited to be here with you. Hey, Jonathan, will you do me a favor and um, will you share screen? Um, so we are building the College Success DAO. Um, it's a student-led community focused on college access, Web3, and closing the opportunity gap for um, underrepresented um, young people in Southern California. Um, our team um, consists of um, myself, Jonathan Villafuerte, Sofia Tannenhaus, and Julio Garcia Granados. We bring I think a, a pretty complementary range of experiences. Um, we have deep knowledge and expertise in the college access space, um, knowledge of how to build student-led uh, communities, and um, experience uh, integrating new technologies and using data for learning. And finally, we really have deep uh, experience with pedagogy and really thinking about how do you build um, collaborative um, experiences for young people. And um, we all, as Forrest alluded to, work for the High Tech High Graduate School of Education. There are partners for this project. Um, and for the last four years, all of us have been working on a different project called the Carpe College Access Network, right? We bring together um, 30 high schools from Southern California, and we have, um, I think, been effective in expanding the pipeline of underrepresented students going directly to colleges where they're likely to graduate from. But what we've found is just supporting students in getting to college is not enough. And that's really the problem that we want to address with this project. I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan, who's going to, who's going to share more. Thank you, Ben. Um, buenos dias. Uh, hello to everyone. Jonathan Villafuerte. I spent about 10 years working in the nonprofit field within college access. And so what I saw firsthand was that we can prepare students all we want, but for them to be successful at the college level, it takes a little bit more. And um, we are trying to solve a real world problem here, right? And that is that three out of four underrepresented students, um, these are culturally, linguistically diverse uh, populations, right? Students that look like me, that have uh, a similar background, that speak different languages, they are not graduating from four year universities at the same rate as other students. And what research has found and what I know from talking to these students is that the biggest barrier for them to be a college graduate um, is usually financial support. And that's um, why we feel that taking the DAO approach to this um, will help us solve this issue. And that is because what it allows to provide direct payments to students. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the process at a higher education, but sometimes it takes months for a student to receive a scholarship check, right? When really they need this money immediately to buy books, to buy food, to pay rent, right? And so for them to wait a few months um, is not um, the best best for them. Um, by us using uh, crypto, it helps us to pay, make direct payments to these students for doing and completing tasks um, that they would normally do. Think about it kind of like a play to earn model, right? We know of Axie Infinity, how people are earning money for completing tasks. We will do the same for college students, right? For them to register for classes, for them to attend orientation, for them to go to tutoring, they will be earning um, in essence, compensation for those tasks, helping them be successful. We're also taking a peer mentor model where we are going to connect freshman students for entering college with students that are a few years above them that have been through the process. We know that research says that near age peers have a higher impact of influence with these students. They've been through the process, right? So when we think about DAO stewards, essentially our peer mentors will be doing just that, right? Guiding our new members through the process of what it takes to be successful 
in college. And through the entire process, our young people will be learning um, about financial planning. They're going to know, they're going to create wallets, they're going to know what cryptocurrencies are, what uh, stable coins are, what governance tokens are. And in essence, we want to give the power over to the students themselves. Ben and I, you know, we've been through the education system, um, but we are far apart from what, what the experience is today. The experts of, of what college is like uh, is in the hands of the young people themselves. And that's why we feel that it's important to for them to participate in the shared governance with a governance tokens where they themselves are making the decisions as to where the funds need to go. And I'll hand it over to Ben. Um, thanks, Jay. And, um, you know, finally, we would just appreciate um, your um, contribution to um, to this project, right? Like we really want to create a new type of education philanthropy where direct cash transfers are administered by the community on chain, fully transparent. We want to support um, underrepresented young people in realizing college success, gaining access to um, social economic mobility and participating in the Web3 economy. And then one thing that I think is, is unique about this project is um, all contributions that are made through Giveth will be um, paid directly to students without any administrative overhead. We fortunately have the budget and some other uh, grants that cover you know, our day-to-day -day costs and salaries. Thank you. Super wonderful. I love um, how you're applying Web3 um, to solve this very real problem. Um, thank you for sharing your experience and your project. I want to open it up. Are there any questions for the College Success DAO? I do have a question. Um, I think it's a two-part question, really. I was just wondering how the students have reacted so far to, uh, to crypto in general and also to um, what their thoughts are about the government's tokens. Yeah, so I would I would just say like um, some context is um, we are going to um, run a initial pilot um, this summer, right? Support students who are uh, transitioning to to college. Um, and so we are just in the process of uh, recruiting mentors and also, you know, identifying um, students to, to join the DAO and participate. Um, so we don't, I, I would just say like we're, we're still kind of figuring out the answers to both of those questions, but I would say like our initial conversations with students um, have been real interest in crypto and like uh, excitement about kind of learning about it and experiencing it. But um, a lot of students that, you know, we uh, want to have uh, participate in this community are not familiar, don't have a wallet, so there will definitely be like, a learning curve and getting them oriented and getting them set up. And I, like one thing I'll just say, and I'm like, uh, I'm really curious, like other people on this call who, who maybe are further along and who have thought about this is like, you know, we, we are planning to distribute the governance token. We are definitely planning on, you know, doing some, you know, initial kind of voting on some, some key uh, decisions over the summer. But like one thing, one fear, I guess I'll just name is like uh, a longtime educator is just that like the tech gets in the way or like the governance token gets in the way because it's complex. So like we want to figure out a way to kind of like introduce it and give young people experience with it, but not make it overwhelm the project because again, like our project at its core is really about like connecting young people to each other, seeing that like other young people like like them of can graduate and be successful in college. Um, and um, also, you know, provide financial support. So that was kind of a long winded answer, but but hopefully it answered your question. Brian Jay, you want to add anything to that? No, I, I echo everything you said. Um, I've been on the ground talking to students. They, they are excited. They obviously know what crypto is. They know what NFTs are, right? They want to learn more. That's what they keep saying, right? And so as much as um, this would be a, a project for them to earn uh, money to help them with college, it will also 
um, as a product of them be educating on Web3 and crypto. Thank you, Ben and Jonathan. I have a question. Um, I was wondering, you mentioned you had a handful of schools in Southern California, you, 17 or something like that. So I, I'm assuming those are your, you're finding your students from there. How big is, is your community of students now and how do you visualize it, uh, its growth? Is it, is it sort of open to anybody or really is it just coming from this, the, these areas, these schools? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. So this current project um, called the Carpe College Access Network has 30 you know, plus high schools in Southern California participating um, collectively. There's about, I think about probably 15 to 20,000 graduates um, from those high schools each year. Um, you know, I think we would like to get to a place where we serve, you know, uh, I would say like probably 30 or 40 percent of students and um, I think part of the hope is to um, connect to specific like uh, higher education institutions so hey if you're going to a particular college um, we want to connect you with other students who went to that same college to help you navigate that system because you know each each like context is unique and so we think there's real value in connecting students in a peer mentorship relationship who go to the same institution um, but I would just say that's like that's the future right right now I would say like we are trying to run a pilot this summer that's pretty small scale that's about 25 students right it's uh, expensive and it costs add up fast when you're making direct payments to students and so we have the budget currently to run this pilot with um, about 25 students and you know our hope is to gather evidence that this is a successful approach and then next year really try to raise enough money to to scale up right to, to get to serving you know hundreds and, and potentially thousands of students and I would just say like you know we we are fortunate um, in that we have, I think, good relationships and connections to established educational philanthropy, but um, we're really excited about the possibility of funding some of this work through small scale, you know, community led donations through Giveth and through other kind of crypto channels. So this is like a little bit of like an exploration for us of like a new way to raise money. Um, Cause we, I'll just say like, we've had, we have had some like challenges with some of the other funders where they try to dictate this sort of project. And like, we think that there's like a lot of power and like, like small scale donation where like um, we can sort of like work more closely with the grassroots, I would say. And to add to that, we do have plenty of experience starting at a small scale and growing projects over time. Um, for example, a project last summer where we work with seniors graduating, transitioning them into community college, which is also a somewhat of its own pandemic where students are not making the transition after graduation. We've scaled that up to multiple of our high schools already. Um, so, so we have experience doing that. Amazing. Are there any other questions for uh, Ben and Jonathan of College Success Dow? Really 
That's a good question. I mean, I would just say we built the website before we created the account on Giveth and we're knowledgeable about Giveth. So we're, I mean, we're open to, uh, you know, linking through Giveth. And, and I'd be interested in having that conversation with, you know, with uh, folks at, at Giveth about the kind of trade-offs um, of that and ways to think about it. I think definitely like having some sort of like verified trusting organization, which is a role that I can imagine Giveth playing rather than just like asking for a direct contribution to a wallet is a better model for kind of this, this space. So again, not deliberate on our part, just kind of the order of, of when we built the website to when we created this project on Giveth. Well, that's good to hear. I, I also noticed at least one thing was that um, I, I was looking at that exact same thing that Ashley was looking at, and that your wallet, you're you're using a multi-sig wallet to receive funds, and then the on Giveth right now we don't make it easy to allow you to use a multi-sig wallet, and and so a lot of that is our UX, and I appreciate and and give a tip of the hat to like uh, the approach of like not keeping all the funds in one key. Uh, and I was, I just wanted to say, I don't know, this is not common knowledge, but you can actually deploy with the same address, a multi-sig, this multi-sig on multiple chains. So it has the same address. And then uh, if you make a pull request, we could actually update this, um, update your account to have, uh, to have the same address, at least, at least you'd have the same address. So the funds don't have to go to you. I assume it's your address, honestly, uh, and then and then funnel into the multi sig. Yeah, that's. I'd I'd love to like uh, talk through how to how to best set that up because yeah, that's our that's a little bit of our dilemma is like you know we we feel more secure right using a a multi sig right where multiple members of our project and our team have to like you know approve transactions and like. Um, rather than it feeling like just like my personal MetaMask wallet. So, uh, so yes, I think figuring out some of these issues would, but would, would be great. And again, not, not intentional. And, and I think um, resolving some of these issues would be, make a lot of this work easier for, for new people who are, who are trying to go in this, on this same journey. Wonderful. Um, well, just in the effort of time, um, I think we'll need to close with the College Success DAO so that I can intro our last two projects. But thank you so much for everything that you're doing to support um, the youth and graduating from college, especially our under uh, underrepresented population. So thank you for that. If anyone has additional questions that they would like to ask or just stay connected, remember we've got the event chat channel in the Giveth Discord where you can follow up with Ben and Jonathan. Um, but without further ado, I would love love to intro um, Vlad with Colectivo. Um, this is a really awesome project in Rio de Janeiro um, in the historical downtown area. Um, basically, they have experienced oppression of freedom of speech and the ability to um, skate in downtown area. And so this group sort of formed organically organizing meetings and protests. Um, and now it's become a cool movement of artists and skateboarders. Um, so today we have Vlad here representing this project. Um, and I'm going to pass the mic to Vlad. And also I will share my screen for you, Vlad, if you need me to let me know. Uh, I think I got it. I think I got okay. it to share the screen. Cool. Yeah. And thanks for the introduction, guys. Sorry for the the, ma the mess and the trouble earlier. I lost my phone. I lost my connection at my home. I had to go to my parents' house in the other side of town, but everything's fine now. Uh, at the same, at the right time. <laughs> so I got lucky. So lots of cool projects here today. It's so nice to, to hear like, uh, um, common ideas and 
common problems that we have and common uh, stuff that we deal uh, as project managers. And I'm very glad to see those things in common, the, the easy parts, the hard parts, and uh, how you're using uh, the technology and the idea that give it is. And before telling a story, uh, just like to say that the idea of give it of like joining uh, Web three, Web two, uh, donating with credit cards, cryptocurrency, making it easier, using mainnet and XDAI, and that's all amazing. And and I think this kind of work is that what makes possible to all kind of projects from all over the world to be together in one place, like trying to help each other. And I'm very glad as I'm learning about give strings, give backs, uh, give economy, um, and the whole and the whole nature and assets of the project that you guys are building here. So, and thanks for the opportunity of talking about my own. Hey. So, guys, um, our story uh, begins like uh, 20 years ago. Uh, where a certain culture was developing downtown of Rio de Janeiro, which is a very beach place, you know, have like a beach culture. And we are a third world country in Brazil, right? Uh, back in the days, mainly 20 years ago, the information used to travel like slower. And we had like lots of movements joined together at the same time and a, and a great wave of repression of those movements. And we we lack of a good environment for sorry environment for sorry I'm not listening well. Am I cutting for you too? I'm not listening well. Am I cutting for you too? Well, yeah, no, you're cutting. Well, I think Jim Jim Toma was just uh, giving some feedback. Okay, but you can hear me, Griff? Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we, we hear you fantastically. Oh, yeah. Thanks. So, um, so we are facing uh, this wave of repression and stuff, and we lack of, like, uh, ideal environment for practicing sports, for a culture to develop and stuff like that. And it had this very historical place in downtown called Praça 15, which was the place where like people put the first step in Brazil and stuff. It was this historical place where the emperor lived and stuff like that. And it became like a square that was occupied for the street protagonists, if I may say like that, like not just skaters, but like homeless people, uh, street artists and stuff like that. And like people like that. And I have like a little presentation here with this, the, the story of this place. And you can see that we start to occupy this place in 1997. And in 1998, there was a decree of the mayor forbidding uh, the presence of people there, skateboarding, even riding a bicycle was forbidden. And it was like kind of a uh, main mindset of the whole city, you know, about those kind of activities. So we, we couldn't even like ride a bike uh in public squares and stuff like that we couldn't occupy the the squares if you know what i mean and then uh but we did anyway as i said we didn't have the environment and this place was the perfect environment uh for meeting skateboarding with street artists and like lots of people for the whole city because as it is in downtown every public transportation leads to there so we start to have like a very good uh, cultural uh, meetings there uh, and then we start to ask ourselves why is this forbidden why is this is like different for the rest of the world why let that happen so after the decree we start uh, our first movement is not here, but it's, it's in that here, one. Sorry, that one. Sorry. Sorry, it's a little messed up because we try to translate uh, in a rush. Uh, so in 2001, uh, some people start to get like arrested and stuff for practicing uh, his culture. And then we start to make like a silent protest. Silent because we're, we're not like violent, you know, and like not like do anything they didn't want us to do but it was we were standing there since 2009 and and all that 
we made like this movie like several years every year there was like one day that we met there like from all over the place from all over the country for that place because that place it was kind of the symbol of the struggle for the other place that people doesn't let us be ourselves and do our stuff and practice our culture so in 2011 we got the freedom a, a decree like we got uh, like on, on the media we made like a huge noise and we could like uh get a document that allow us to skate there and and like do other stuff like ride bicycles and like have, uh, receive circles people make musical events and really use the place so we started like to make some projects and like, then you can see like it's written in portuguese but it's a timeline of actions that we made uh to take care of the place and to make an example of other place uh for other place and then we started to build like other environments in the city and rebuild stuff because all the places we had like for the sport or for the culture was like some politicians trying to make something to get some votes you know so it was not well done it was like dangerous and stuff so really started to make some effect on the city and then and the country and that was all before the Olympics, which built a, another scenario. And after that, we started to like have have another role, which is like take care of the culture of skateboard, not the sporting size side of it. And our events started to grow a lot, and then we started incubating like music and art expositions. And we're like, we are skaters, but we all do other stuff. Like I'm a community manager community manager of like web three uh projects you know and all of that uh, and all that i know i learned uh on this future like joining together with the community building a project and like running after what we want and what we need and that meant like changing a piece of law you know so this was a huge experience for me as a community manager but we are also like artists uh, this is Wilbur right here, like he's a designer, we are uh, lawyers, we are architects, we are like lots of kinds of people. And our events start like to become something else related to all of those stuff. So I'm gonna like scroll down a little bit. So this is the decree that he got at the time. This was like our crew at the time, everyone is like much older now. But it's still doing this is the space that we occupy uh in in downtown is the most accessible place in the city as i said and like it's the space that we concentrate like our actions this is us in one of the events with a flag like skateboarding is future and in this event we talk about diversity and how to build like environment that's friendly for all races, all genders and all that stuff because we need to, like to skate at the time when it was forbidden you need to be a rebel and need to like have love of courage and it was not like a friendly environment so that's uh some of values we try to work on with our community and with the other communities or people relates to for example a skateboarder that is also a designer and artist relates to the artist community and we do stuff together so it was the kind of way we start to spread uh in the last year um and you know, I'm using like our event presentation to talk about the things we've done, but it became the uh, association of uh, Rio, uh, and we st we started like to quick start lots of skate schools and like uh, social projects uh, in some favelas. Favelas are slums here. It's a really poor place that we assemble like. Uh, you know or temporary or uh forever spots there for people start giving classes and you know like start educating because skateboard is not just about like riding skates uh it's about like you know being with other people and know other cultures and you know i'm use also using the presentation because we are doing this event once again this year we didn't do uh last couple of years because of the pandemic we're returning back but it, uh we're going back for doing that but it's not the only thing we're doing right now we're like focused on getting our website out there and like we're building 
projects in several neighbors. We got like uh, uh, really good communication out with this current uh, uh, government uh, of Rio that's like willing to like uh, start doing against some stuff. So we mapped lots of places in the city and the goal here, it's like really like rebuild the city with uh, like the projects we are always like making some of us are architects like always rethinking how it could be more friendly for like everyone else like everything that we build we never think just of skateboarding but we build stuff uh for the city and we have a map right now of place you want to rebuild and like some other smaller projects that we want to count with give it uh to make reality and also we always has been so much so local and always question ourselves like how it could be like more reachable so we partner with with, with skate hive with a group of web3 skaters that use social media in web3 that like organize themselves in web3 to achieve their goals so give it like being a part of of the tools we're using not just like to uh making some budgets for like dividing those projects but always also to show that for other communities because what we achieve here we had a similar case in i say they didn't get there but uh, we do believe that our future need to be seen more than a, like a, a sport or things like that. And the power of change and the community power that we have there is an example for several things. So I'm really glad to be using like uh, also using Give It to make those things possible. This is like a cinema in the street that we do to show to join the makers of the videos with the people in the streets and like it's very glad it's very nice to see that happen and give it give it is helping all those things to happen vlad thank you so much for sharing um so much about collectivo it seems like you guys are really doing a lot i love all of the partnerships and bringing other organizations and and missions in so yeah thank you for applying uh, web3 technology in this space um i'm just noticing that we are coming to our last 10 minute block um, and i want to make sure that good work foundation is also able to share so if you have questions for vlad and collectivo and the movement that's going on here, please post them in the event chat channel and Vlad can answer your questions there. Um, I just want to go ahead and intro Gemma with the Good Work Foundation, um, another incredible organization that we're very excited to feature today. Um, they are uh, working mostly in the heart of um, South Africa and um, are helping to uh, bring more um, education and schooling and resources to the children, to 100 South African children there that are beginning school. Um, so I would love to intro Gemma and give you the mic to close us out. Are you with us, Gemma? I think she was with us and it looks like she just dropped. I'm going to give her a second. There you are. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, it's soft, but I hear you. Okay, cool. Um, so just in the interest of time, I'm not going to share my screen or anything like that. I'll just give you a, a bit of a rundown on what we do at Good Work Foundation. And firstly, just to say that we are on the ground and we're not doing anything that is related to Web3 or that the work that we've done with Giveth thus far um, is the first time that we ventured in any sort of uh, crypto fundraiser and it's just been super interesting and I'm grateful to
to a platform like Giveth. Um, I'm head of development at Good Work Foundation, so that means I do all of our a nonprofit um, that is based in rural South Africa. Um, in these rural areas that we work, there is a youth unemployment rate of around 72%, which is probably even more exacerbated um, with the COVID pandemic and the effects on the tourism industry up here. Um, and I think the question we ask ourselves is how are we going to change this when research shows that majority of South African grade four learners cannot read for meaning in any language, including their own mother tongue. Um, so what we believe is what most good educators believe, and, and that is that good learning is about creating nurturing environments that are engaging, fun, and kind. Um, and I'm not sure if you know the context of education in South Africa, but um, the situations that a lot of these children are facing is one child, I mean, one teacher to 50 children, um, classrooms with broken desks, uh, uh, they've got computer rooms that may have stated the art technology but they stay closed because teachers are terrified of using the technology because they haven't been taught properly themselves so the situation is pretty pretty intense for the schools so what we do as as good work foundation is come alongside the schools and support them we've got these very high-tech digital learning centers that are based in communities on the borders of the great Kruger national park uh, we have got um, five centres that are based up here in Mpumalanga and another one in another province. And overall, we see about 12,000 young people going through our learning programmes on a weekly basis. We've got a couple of different academies. Um, we've got an open learning academy that is for kids um, from grade three to grade eight. And we um, intervene really strongly with English and math literacy. Um, for obvious reasons, those are languages of access, um, but uh, we do everything on a predominantly digital basis so that these kids start to adopt digital as their native language. It might sound like an obvious thing to do for all of us here in, in a digital environment having this conversation. Um, but as I said, for these young people, some of them get to the age of 18 or even 21 and they've never touched a computer before. And now they're expected to participate in the current uh, like digital economy that we're all operating in. Um, so if we don't intervene, come alongside the schools and support with that digital and English and math literacy at that early age, um, then, then it's it's going to be really difficult for these these children to operate in this fourth industrial revolution or 21st digital economy or whatever we want to call it um so that's open learning a program um math english digital literacy and we do coding and robotics we focus on conservation it's a really important um part of what we do considering the geographic area that we are located right on the borders of the kruger park but of course considering the state of the world and the and um and conservation uh we do citizenship so that really is helping these young children understand that they might come from a really rural village in you, you know in what some people would consider the middle of nowhere they might not have school shoes they might um, not be able to use a computer yet but they are as equally as important as any child or human being on the planet um, so we try and instill kind of that pride and that confidence in who they are um, and we also do uh, creative arts. Um, we believe that every child is is an individual, and even though we have 11,000 children coming through, um, we want each of them to uh, have this um, opportunity to express who they are. Um, moving on from there, we've got a bridging year academy that's predominantly for school leavers. Um, and as I said, you know, some of these kids are leaving school and they've never touched a computer before, so we focus again on computers. We do English, we do career interest profile. We do everything that's going to help them um, be successful in um, in in, uh, in employment or university or whatever it is they want to go on to next. Um, and then finally, we've got some career academies, and that's to take them into an employable position. Um, so we've got a conservation academy. We have a hospitality academy, again, because of the geographic area that we're located in the tourism industry. Um, we've got an IT academy, and we've got a facilitator academy. Um, so yeah, as I said, across all these programs, we've got about 12,000 people on a weekly basis. And um, we've also got a small BPO center um, where our IT students go and it's like their, their first really. 
and um, it's got a really small income at the moment but it's a pilot project and the aim is to turn that into a bigger more sustainable income stream for good work foundation so that we don't have to re rely so much on donor funding um, we are very very long from that because we've got only two clients and two employees um, but in the pilot that is is working and and we call this thing the ecosystem of learning and working um so that was like a really <laughs> quick version of what it is that we do um does anyone have any questions Can, uh, yeah, just a quick one on, on the, I actually had trouble finding uh, the Good Work Foundation because of the title. Um, I, what's your relation with Giving Tuesday? So, to be honest, I used, I, I wanted to do something that was going to be a crypto, like donation, um, like a, an effort to get some kind of crypto donations in. And I found Giveth randomly on Google mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to try this out and do a campaign for Giving Tuesday. Um, so we don't have a relationship with Giving Tuesday. Giving Tuesday is this global event that obviously happens. Um, and we we ourselves run different Giving Tuesday campaigns. Um, so that's what that was. I thought that I was setting up a campaign, but I realize now that I should have set it up as a project for Good Work Foundation. Um, um, so it really is, like I said, it's a massive learning curve for us. Um, but we are really excited in that we got about $2,800 worth of crypto donations, which you know, I don't even know how to access that, that fund yet. Um, but it's just so exciting for us to be moving into that space. Awesome. Do we have any other questions for Gemma and Good Work Foundation? And remember, if you have any questions that come up for Gemma or any of other, our other makers, our other presenters, you can always put them in the event chat channel. Um, Gemma, is there anything else that you'd like to share um, before I pass the mic? Nope, that's all. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to name, we are at around like 1230 right now, but I want to make sure we have a few moments to talk about um, our give token farming. Uh, this is a really cool concept. So I'm going to let Griff take it away on that. And then afterwards, if anyone is interested in more mixing and mingling, um, we have a give cafe gather town that will be dropping the link in our event chat channel. And you can head over there for a little bit of extra networking with our makers. So Griff, would you like to share about give farming? You are on mute. Sorry about that. Yeah, let me just throw this up on my screen. Uh, yeah, so the Give Farm. So a lot of you have Give tokens. And of course, the natural instinct uh, is to, you know, sell it and then go and buy, uh, you know, the stuff that your projects needs. And I, I think that's the right way to go. You should definitely consider selling your Give tokens uh, right away to achieve the project goals. However, part of Giveth's mission is to bring you into the Web3 space. We want to make it fun and enticing to actually start making uh, an understanding and, and have an incentive to understand what the hell is going on in this crazy crypto world. And so uh, to the Give Farm is a really important part of the Give economy. It provides liquidity to the give, for givebacks. So when you get when donors receive gift tokens, they can sell them if they want, right? When projects get donated gift tokens, they can sell them into uh, into ETH or into Honey or into uh, whatever token they want. And the gift farm is what provides that liquidity. But uh, also, at least initially, in the long run, we want get the give the give DAO will end up holding a lot of liquidity itself. But we need time to ramp that up. But right now, there's also this other opportunity that with your give tokens, you can participate in various ways. So the the most obvious way is to just earn a yield. You can actually deposit your give tokens into uh, Give Garden Staking. 
So this is uh, not only do you actually earn a yield right now, you earn 215% a year on your on your staking uh, when you deposit give here. But also when you deposit give there, you get a voice in the give economy. So we have a DAO that allows you to actually vote on proposals uh, that will, you know, be funding developments within the give economy. So if we want to, uh, for instance, create give power, which is the next big thing on our roadmap, uh, you know, the give token holders will vote on this on this sort of thing. And uh, but you can actually earn rewards just by um, participating in the give farm. And if you really want to go wild, you can actually uh, use your donations to stake into these other pools. Now, I don't suggest that if this is really the only donations that you have, but if you're having trouble even getting, you know, crypto into the fiat world, then while you're sitting on your crypto, you can uh, learn how to use the gift farm. And I, I really want to encourage this because in the long run, the goal is to give you all your own DAOs so that you can actually start being rewarded uh, in, in, the, in, in a fair way for the value that you're creating. Uh, and this is just a simple, easy to start. So we have uh, the gift farm is on XDAI, uh, which is where it's really cheap with gas. And you can see the rewards are really insane uh 700 percent 400 500 percent 200 percent uh and then on ethereum uh we also give huge rewards as well uh for staking in uh uh there it is 800 percent for an 80 20 bow pool so it's mostly give tokens it doesn't take that much eth which is another if you have main net donations might be worth looking into uh, and we have this kind of interesting, not for the faint of heart, uh, Uni V3 pool that you could participate in, but it's a little more complicated. So uh, the other way, if you don't, if the farm is like somewhat, uh, you don't really like it, it doesn't feel good to you, you can also uh, go straight to the Give Garden uh, on and actually stake your tokens here. It doesn't show the APR, but you actually get the same APR as everybody else. Uh, on the farm, uh, which is cool. So let's see, enable account. So you can actually see that I have in the give farm, uh, move this to XDAI. In the give farm, I have 11,000 tokens here. And if I go to the give garden, uh, da -da. <laughs> try this again. Oops, that's the wrong account. Connect this one. So in the Give Garden, I also have eleven thousand six hundred Give uh, G Give. So this is really just the same thing. You know, here we're showing it off for the Dgens. So that's like, yeah, you got this crazy APR. But actually, the people who just want to participate in our governance get uh, this is the second UI for it. You can wrap your Give tokens here, and you also earn rewards for voting on whether or not we should sponsor a gift party in the Dallas, Mexico, or create a Give Elk dual reward farm, right? And this is where we actually decide the ec economic systems that we are creating. And, uh, and this is a way to start educating yourselves on how to do DAOs before we get to the process where you can. Uh, the other thing that uh, is worth mentioning here, because you know, it says 500%, 200%, but honestly, you only get so much liquid and so much streaming. This is uh, the give stream. So the give stream is, is something that we've created to really enable our, our own economy to grow as we grow. And right now, the gift stream is very young. Only 3.68% uh, is, uh, oh man, is, 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 is how far we are. So we still have four years and nine months left of the gift stream. And basically, whenever, kind of like what College Dow was talking about with the play to earn model, whenever you're participating in the give economy in a, in a beneficial way for giveth, then you get some liquid give tokens and you get this give stream. And the give stream and, and the liquid tokens are kind of ratioed out so that over time it grows. So right now the give stream is about, it's like 11%-ish, uh, 12% is liquid, and then 88% goes into the stream. So when, you do, when you're earning farming rewards, when you're voting in the give garden, when you're donating and, and, give, and getting givebacks, 
When you're doing anything that helps the give economy grow, uh, then you are rewarded with a, some liquid give tokens and this give stream. So uh, you can see that I have a flow rate uh, in this in this account. Uh, I have a flow rate of three three hundred and eleven point uh, four four give per week. So it's really cool because your give flow rate, I'm guaranteed to get this. If I do nothing for Giveth for the rest of my life, which is very unlikely, but if that is the case, I will still be able to get this 311 give tokens every week. And so it's kind of like this residual income, this stream that can only go up. You can only get more give per week uh, for the next five years, basically. So. I know it's a lot. It's kind of complicated. I'm not going to pretend that I did a great job of explaining it, but you all, all of your projects have received a lot of give tokens. And I would, I would really encourage you to start diving in. You can be rewarded with those give. If you're having trouble cashing out or you don't need to cash out right away, uh, I would, cons I would uh, really encourage you to go play with the give, give economy and s see if you can increase, create a flow rate, create a residual income for your, uh, for your project that you'll be able to collect uh, continuously for the next five years and earn, earn rewards by either providing liquidity or uh, even just staking and giving your project a voice in the future of our economy. Uh, yeah, and I'll pass it back to you, Forrest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Griff. I just, yeah, I think all of this is so, um, so unique and exceptional and the, the idea that we can um, create um, financial um, abundance that is coming to us on a weekly basis and, and not uh, only one-off donations, but making it really work for us is is really beautiful concept. And I'm really glad for everyone's participation here today. Um, please, a reminder that we have the event chat channel, um, which has been active throughout the Meet the Makers today. If you have additional questions for our projects, you can um, you can stay in contact with us there. Um, I also just posted a link. If you have a verified project on Giveth and you would like to be fe featured in one of our future Meet the Makers events, you can fill out this type form um, to apply and be featured. We're going to be doing um, themes as we did today around youth. We'll do other themes in the future. Um, so yeah, please send us your projects. Um, also, we can post a link uh, for verifying your project if you have a project that's not yet verified and you would like to be um, so that you can participate in our Givebacks program and also be featured in Meet the Makers. Um, thank you so much, everyone, today. This has been wonderful. We are going to head over to our Gather Town Give Cafe, which is also a really cool tool where we can um, meet virtually but uh, almost have like little Sims avatars. Um, it's a really cute literal cafe vibe um, where we're going to be hanging out with uh, some of the projects that were here today just for the next like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, if you have more questions and you'd like to, to get connected a bit more one-on-one -on -one, conversationally, we'll be over there. Um, we are, if we haven't already, we're posting the link in the event chat channel. I think um, Ashley is typing that now. Um, so yeah, thanks so much. This has been recorded, so uh, we'll also share a link to the recording, and I think it's on our Giveth YouTube page. Thanks so much, everybody. See you Great at the project. Give Cafe. Thank you so much. This is Thank awesome. you, Forrest. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Giveth. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Really, thanks, guys. See you. Thanks for this space. Thank <laughs> you.